So the first excuse for not getting sober is that now is not the right time. I use this excuse very much along my journey. And the truth is, is that there really is no right time to get sober. The more you use, the more I can speak for myself, the more I use, the worse and worse life got. So it became almost like there was less, it was actually less of a right time to use the more I continued to use. So I had to be like, okay, um, I wanna get sober now. I'm not gonna feel, it's not gonna feel right. It's not gonna feel perfect whatever, I gotta take this step. Because what I found is with the addictions that I procrastinated on and didn't you know, take my advice, not use this excuse, what happened was that a year would go by and I'd still be using it and I was like, damn, I wish I would have quit a year ago when I was making those excuses. And so the second excuse, and this kind of goes into the first one, is that I'm not ready. I use this one a lot too, uh, saying like, okay, I just have to get a few more things in my life right. Uh, once this and this happens, then I'll be able to get sober. Uh, I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling Of course I wasn't feeling it. I was stoned or I was drunk or I was high or whatever. And so when I stopped saying that excuse, one, I was able to finally like kind of face my own uh, dishonesty to myself. And the truth was I was ready. I've been ready for, for many months, many years with all my addictions. I've been, I've been ready for a long time. I just wasn't willing to do it. So once I finally accepted that, I'm like, all right, well, there's, it's not just gonna disappear one day. Uh, there isn't gonna be a time where I am ready. So I might as well just do it now and get it over with. And so that was kind of the attitude I had going, going into the addictions and going into sobriety. And I think that really helped. The next one here is gonna be that my friends will judge me. And I, most of my friends when I was using, they also used. A lot of them could use, I guess you could say responsibly, where they wouldn't have really negative consequences with their life like I did. So there was this, there was this inner dialogue that said, if you quit, uh, these people won't like you anymore. Maybe they won't accept you. Maybe they'll make fun of you. Maybe they'll, they'll judge you and, and talk behind your back or whatever. And this was like totally uh, just made up in my head. It felt very real, but it wasn't, it wasn't actually real. And even if it was, um, who cares? Because after I did get sober, I was like, I would not go back to these friends if that meant that I would not get to be sober. Like there was no way I was gonna do that. And I found that the further and further along I got on the journey, th these people that I, I was worried that would judge me, they either A, uh, kind of fell out of my life, so we no longer were compatible, or two, they were actually really supportive and like proud of me for getting sober because the ones that real that were real friends, um, including family members, they just wanted the best the best for me. For them, they could have their best life and use weed, alcohol, etc. Um, I couldn't though, and they they could see that. However, as a good friend, they're not just gonna say, "Dude, you you should quit," because I'm your friend and I say so. No, they were gonna let me find that out on my own. And once I did, they were like, "Dude, we're so so happy for you that you you got your life on track." So, what I found is that yeah, friends really actually real friends actually really won't judge you. So the next excuse on why I'm not gonna get sober today is that it's too hard, and. Uh, there is some truth in this one. Quitting is not easy, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, it's a difficult task. It might be the hardest thing you have to go through in your entire life. I know there are a few addictions where I'm just so relieved I got through it because I do not want to go through that again. And it very well might have been the hardest thing I've ever, I've ever done. I used to run cross country, a little story time here, and we do 5Ks. Uh, I was also in track, so I did the mile, two mile, 800, which were basically all out sprints as for a mile, two mile, 5K, and it was fucking hell. The thing was though, is it, is it ended after, well, with the 5K after like 17 minutes, with a mile, obviously, after like four and a half minutes. And, and the pain was so intense, it, it felt like it was just never gonna end. The thing with recovery though, is that getting sober, it doesn't end in 20 minutes. The pain is gonna be prolonged and you have to have some endurance to get through that initial time. So again, back to this initial point, there is some truth is that in that it's very difficult. However, at some point along my journey, I realized that, you know what, it's gonna be fucking hard no matter what, if I start today, if I start tomorrow, if I start a year from now. So like I said earlier, I'm like, I might as well just get over with and, and go through this pain right now, right here, right now. If you've ever uh, remember being a kid and having to do chores, right? You're like, oh, the last thing I wanna do is chores. I wanna play video games. But as soon as you finish those chores, I bet you felt better. And I bet the relief you felt was like way worth it. And I know I thought, I was like, thank gosh, I finished those chores when I did because now I get to enjoy the rest of the day. So thinking about it like that can make, make that it's too hard thought a little less difficult. 
Now, before we go into the last one here, I want to say if you are ready to stop making excuses and get sober this year, I invite you to download my free How to Get Sober in 2023 PDF guide. It's going to have seven tips that are going to go into detail on things you can do right now, actionable steps to help you start getting sober, start help you start switching your mindset from addiction and I'm stuck, I can't do this, to growth mindset. Wow, there's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and I'm just gonna better myself by doing this. So I invite you to download below. You just gotta fill out your email and I'll send you a copy right to, right to your inbox. So definitely recommend checking that out and feel free to pass it along too if you like it and or reach out to me if you got some value from it. So then last and final thing, the, the final excuse here <laughs> before we start, we start talking about this topic here is going to be, I'm gonna fail and or it won't be perfect. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist and it's caused a lot of pain in my life. Um, even as I just mumble, fumbled over the word perfection, I was like, dang it, why didn't you say that perfect? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's something I've really had to work on though and it's definitely held me back a lot in life. There are many things I wish I would have done growing up that I didn't because I was scared of not being perfect or not doing it just right. And what I found is when I got sober, I actually went into OCD therapy because the first person who sponsored me, after a while, we, we were working together for about, I'd say a year, and he's like, man, I think there's something, another underlying issue going on here. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, it seems like you might have obsessive compulsive disorder. And I was like, huh, interesting. And as soon as he said that, I'm like, this totally makes sense. Like growing up, whenever a toy got like, like scratched or scuffed, I would like, be just like, I would not like it anymore. Um, if anything got like, like on, if anything wasn't perfect, even in a video game, I would be upset. And so I really had to address that. And once I did, I realized a lot of my life was operated around things being perfect or just right. So that is definitely something that came up many times before, before that point, before when I was getting sober from weed and alcohol. And then after that point, when I was getting sober from some other stuff like sugar and porn, and uh, it was definitely easier after doing the OCD therapy because I had that awareness that, okay, maybe I'm trying to be perfect with this and there's no such thing. But before, I definitely struggled with that. And I had this like internal notion that like, if I mess up, it means that, you know, I did it wrong and that it's not gonna be cool anymore. <laughs> I mean, as I say this, I laugh because it's, it's ridiculous. However, you might be going through this where it might seem like it, it's not going to be just right or I might fail. And the truth is, you most likely are going to fail. I didn't get sober on my first round in any of the addictions I quit. Nobody I know has quit their very first time. If you have, comment down below because I'd, I'd love to meet you. That'd be, that's a pretty cool thing to do. Uh, most people though, 99% of the people I would bet have not had a clean run from start to finish. There's always bumps, there's relapses, and each one, of course, you learn from a little bit, and so it gets easier and easier each time. However, there is gonna be that period of not succeeding or not reaching that goal of sobriety. And once I was able to accept that, I was like, you know what? I might not get it perfect this time around, right? However, I gotta start. I gotta start putting effort in. I gotta start working on this and, and getting some, some clean time under my belt, whether it be a couple days, whether it be a week, even whether it be a few hours. I just gotta start training that muscle to, to understand how to live without it and to understand how much better life can be without the substance. And once I had that attitude, I was able to actually start making progress because I it took the pressure off. I was no longer worried about having to, to be this perfect saint at sobriety. I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm just gonna give it my best and whatever happens, happens. And what I found is my best was often good enough and here I am today. And so I think anyone out there who is struggling with these five excuses can really overcome them. And I made this video, Find You Well, may I give you some insight into some of the things your mind may be telling you, some of the ways it may be tricking you to not take action on getting so sober today. Uh, and again, if you are interested in getting sober and you are really motivated, I recommend checking out the, the PDF I mentioned earlier in the video, will be linked down below. And also if you are interested, feel free to reach out for one-on-one -on -one coaching. There will be a link down below in that. You're gonna fill out an application. It's gonna ask what addiction you're dealing with and how motivated you really are to quit because that's the real key here is motivation. 
Um, often I would say motivation over perfectly succeeding. <laughs> it, well, one, the motivation is gonna help you succeed. Um, however, if I had to choose one or the other, I would take the motivation because that's gonna get me a lot farther than just being in this perfect flow state where I'm not gonna make any mistakes and boom, I'm gonna be sober and like, you know, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and be sober. No, not gonna happen. It's gotta take work. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great one and talk to you soon. Peace.